Hi and welcome to Cheers SA. I'm Steve Jackweir and I'm joined by my co-host, none other, netball superstar, Jane Oltzwager. Jane, how are you? Jack, I'm very excited. We're on location. Location, location, location. <laughs> and let's guess where we are. I reckon it's a winery. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. On the look of it, either that or a shearing shed. <laughs> well, I haven't been in a shearing shed, but <laughs> you're from the bush, you probably have. But I don't know, yes. Bleasdale Winery. We are. Langhorn Creek. We are. Main oh. Road, Langhorn Creek, mm -hmm. just down from the freeway and not far from Adelaide. Took us under an hour to get here. It's so easy to get here. Like jump, jump, literally is jump on the freeway and bang, you're here. You, you know, you've run through two topics of, you know, how the family's going and then we're here. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> My family's not that big, but no, yeah, no, we, mine, we, went, so. we went very quickly. <laughs> and um, Bleasdale, one of many wineries at Langhorn Creek. Right. Bit of a bit of a sleepy hollow down here. Everyone talks about the Barossa and Clarence Vale, but my God, how many wineries do we go past? Oh, it, absolutely. Well, I was going to say millions. That's probably an exaggeration, but yeah. uh, but quite a few down here, and they're worth investigating. Um, but we wanted to come here because Robbie Potts. Robbie Potts. Robbie Potts. Robbie Potts. Robbie eh? Potts. He's a freak. First of all, what a name. But he is the storyteller of all storytellers, and we're going to meet him a little bit later on. I can't wait. He's mm. got a few stories to tell, too, about not only the family, but wines. It's a very educational chat we're going to have. It is. So it's the Potts family that set up Bleasdale Wine, so we'll learn all about them and, and how they came to Langhorn Creek and uh, and set it up here. They uh, He might run us through a bit of Tawny Port and... Um, yeah, he's got a few other wines on offer as well that uh, we'll either have a chat about here or perhaps we'll have to come back. There's so much to talk about. Perhaps we'll have to come back. Well, he's a storyteller, so I'm sure he's got a few stories to tell. Yeah. And like I said, we, we've just been hanging out to get down here for yeah. ages, so yep. uh, we've finally made it. So yep. if we cut to a break, I'm sure we'll drag him out of the cellar and uh, <laughs> get him up here and make sure he comes and tells a story. Can't wait. But wine storage and logistics, yes. thanks, guys. Uh, great sponsors of ours and... Um, also slow tours. So. That's right. Carol Haslam, we caught up with her a couple of weeks ago and, and had a great chat about her tours. So uh, um, thanks to thanks to both of them, Wine Storage and Logistics and Slow Tours. But we'll be back after this break. Let's get into it. Hi, and welcome back to Cheers SA here at the magnificent winery, Bleasdale Winery, here at Langhorn Creek. Jane, what a beautiful spot. It is an absolutely gorgeous spot. We're, uh, we're standing in the old section of, uh, of Bleasdale Wines. Um, you get to experience this when, uh, when perhaps uh, they've got tours up and running, but without further ado, we need to introduce you to the main man himself. The one, the only. Mr. Robbie Potts. Thank you, Jane. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Brand ambassador, yep. storyteller. Is, uh, is what's written on the business card as well, I That's saw. It. So you're the man who knows everything about this place. Well, I uh, grew up across the road, born in Strathalbyn, mm -hmm. and uh, started work here in 1980, and uh, fifth generation family member. Great great grandfather Frank Potts uh, founded the place back in 1850. Wow. So we've been going 170 years now. I'm very proud of that. And, and, um, yeah, lo lovely industry to be born into. Yeah, most certainly. So, mm. so the name Bleasdale, um, where does that come from? Well, Frank was an Englishman. He came out on the Buffalo in 1836 ah. with Governor Hindmarsh. Yep. And um, there was a Reverend John Ignatius Bleasdale out here at the, at the same time. And he lived over in Victoria, but he used to venture over into South Australia. And um, I don't know whether they were that good of friends or whether Bleasdale influenced him in the agricultural side of things, but he um, used to advocate in his sermons that the uh, drinking of wine was, was was good for you. So Frank thought, well... So that's one for him and one for the sermon, <laughs> one for me. Yeah. Is that how it started? Well, I don't know. I wasn't around back then. But, um, yeah, that's, that's where the name Bleasdale came from, from uh, Reverend John Bleasdale. Of course. Mm. We better cross ourselves and <laughs> yeah. make sure we don't drink too much. Well, if the, if the good Reverend can have a drink, then I'm sure we can yes. continue on yes. with that uh, with that note and keep drinking the Bleasdale wines. So what it, how did it start with what wines? Like, was it... You tell us, the ports yeah. or the... So, as I said, so Frank uh, purchased the land here in 1850 and began farming. He bought 130 acres, began farming that, also planted about 30 acres of vineyard. Mm. But remembering back then, this is in the 1850s, we only made fortified wine, so port and sherry and Madeira. Mm. And um, so he planted Vidello, Shiraz, Grenache, 
made, uh, turned it into port and Madeira and uh, stored in these lovely old barrels that you can see around us. And um, then went about building a winery, the old red gum press, which is alongside of us. And uh, he just went from there. So we only did fortified for the first hundred years. Fantastic. The, the press that you speak of, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll show some clips of it, but it, it's very impressive. Well, that's a bit of a pun there, impressive. <laughs> yeah. No, we think it's, one of, it's the only one of its kind in the world made out of red really? gum, local red gum timber. So, yeah, it's uh, very, very close to us. Yeah. And, and as you come through to, to where the press stands, you, you walk past these massive, massive vats of red gum. Local red gum, red gum vats. vats, yeah, which is very unusual to use red gum as a, as a timber to store wine, but uh, they've all got a wax coating on the inside of them. So they're really, really just a storage vessel. And they storage for your port? They're port yeah, only, yes, yeah. Yep. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. And so not only port on offer here, um, you've got a plethora of wines. We've yep. got the uh, the Mulberry Tree, Cab Saf, which um, you were telling us before was um, one of your best sellers. One of our best sellers. It's got a really good name for reliability and, and uh, value and and quality for a, for a good quaffing red wine. And uh, we actually do have an ancient old mulberry tree out in the vineyard looking over a block of Cabernet Sauvignon. And, and um, yeah, that wine's been around for about 25 years now and um, going really well for so us. So the price point? Price point about $20 a bottle. Yep. Yep. Yeah, a bit That's cheaper for you, Steve, very, I think. Uh, very, <laughs> very affordable. <laughs> yes. I might buy yeah. a couple of cartons and uh, get it down to about $90.99 or something <laughs> sure, per bottle, I'm sure. Yeah. And it's easy to drink. Easy to drink. Yeah. Uh, lovely in its youth, but no worries about putting it away in the cellar for six or eight years. No problem at all. Well, I'm sure we're going to get back here another time, and I'm sure... We're going to taste test because Liz will find out about it and she'll want to come and taste it. Well, we know I, that. I had a quick squiz at the wine, Liz, Jack, and, and anything from Shiraz's, Cab Sav's, Vidello's, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. And the Blancs. sparkling Shiraz. Sparkling yeah, that's, Shiraz. That's my wife drinks. She drinks it like water. She loves it. So I yeah. think we are going to have to uh, have to come back uh, for another trip and, and taste test all of those. Every single one. But we're going to have a taste test later on. I think we're going to try the, your port, which is try called on. the Wise One. Yes. After... Us, oh. yeah, yeah, no doubt. And um, why is that so special? Well, it's a it's a tawny port. I had another great uncle who was a amateur photographer, and he took many hundreds and hundreds of photographs back in the nineteen forties and fifties. And and he took a photo of, of great uncle Dick, who was the twelfth child of Frank Potts the first. Yeah. So <laughs> you're refraining quite a bit there, aren't I'm you? I'm not down there, Uncle Dick. <laughs> yep. Uncle Dick was only 10 years old when his father died back in 1890. Thus, he inherited a lot of money as a young boy, whereas the brothers got vineyard and the sisters and Uncle Dick got money. And uh, so Uncle Dick worked out pretty quickly. He uh, lived with his mother until she passed and then he lived on the property, lived off his inheritance and lived to the ripe old age of 79, never worked a day in his life. So and just the, drank port. Just drank port, and the photograph was titled The Wise One, and uh, so that's where the name comes from. Another good omen there to be drinking, isn't it? So there's, so there's pots galore, isn't there? Like, it, pots, yeah, there, there's uh, quite a few of us around here. Back the to Frank, the founder, Frank. Had, had, well, he had 12 children, yes. 12? And, yeah, and he passed it on to Frank the Second, who had another 10 children. Yeah, so the tree... I know what you're all thinking, though. There was no TV back there. No. We know that for a mm. fact. And uh, they mm. weren't only just good at making wines, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, yeah that's very correct. Yeah. So, so why don't we take a break? Yeah. And then why don't we jump into this after and have a bit of a, a bit of a taste test? It's good to me. Liz will come out of the out of a vat somewhere, <laughs> no, no doubt. And she'll uh, join us and have a, a taste test. Hi and welcome back to Cheers SA here at the Bleasdale Winery at Langhorn Creek, joined by Liz and of course Numero Uno here, Potsy. Yep. And Thanks we're going to have a little taste taste test of this magnificent uh, we are. port that you've got here. So yeah. can you tell yep. us what is this first before you go dipping it in? Give us well, a little bit of uh, background on this piece. Well, with the port itself, actually, so port is just grape juice crushed, pressed out. And then fortified with grape spirit, so and then technically it is a fruit salad. Wow! Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I can get away with saying yeah. it's a fruit salad. <laughs> and then it's just put into an old oak barrel and left here. And this one has been here for at least twelve years, and so the port just matures in there, and obviously it evaporates out through the oak, and that's called the angel share. You heard of that? No. No. So what is that? So the the, the evaporation one? that you lose 
is called the angel share. No, it's a common saying. So, and then you come back and top the barrel up each year. And then uh, when it's ready to bottle, which is getting close to, but we better have a bit of a taste test. Definitely. And um, the instrument that we use to withdraw it is called a wine thief. So uh, you actually, yeah, just... So this is the wise man. The so wise one, Tawny, yeah. The wise man, Tawny. Yeah, yep. and we just pull it out and just... Like that. It's the favourite part of the show, This eh? is the only reason why I ever come. Uh, we know, and we know that, yes, <laughs> yes. There we go, some for you, Steve. Yes, thank and you. And I'll join you. Yes, please. Now, I always grew up with that port was more a dessert. Goes with your dessert at the end of the meal. Yep. You know, and then after that, you might have a cup of coffee. So back cheeses, yeah. Yep. Yeah, cheeses, desserts, yeah. and all that. Correct, of and it's, it's sort of been a obviously become a bit of a forgotten partner now uh, people are drinking red wine all the way through mills now and the poor old tawny port or vintage ports as they are also known um, have sort of been let go and lost a bit of interest in but do you think that's maybe more because a lot of people don't eat desserts as much as they Probably used to could do because a lot of people substitute it with cheese platters now they do and uh, which they um eat with red wine so yes. yeah. but no there's always a place in in our hearts you've for... already drunk yours <laughs> well, just making what sure happened? making sure it wasn't off it's been, since been in here for years yeah. <laughs> oh, this is good wine turn around not, and boom it's, it's gone it's not off I haven't got a straw I, think. <laughs> I might just have one more sip just to make sure just to make sure it's well, okay the first bit wasn't off I know no. that it was absolutely no. smooth as it's there we go All right. so easy to drink it doesn't burn it's just a no, nice no that's it lovely nice, mm. luscious luscious Luscious. So this is where you'll get the legs on the glass a bit more because there's a bit more yeah, alcohol absolutely. in these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That was really lovely. I'm not normally a huge, um, like, sweet nope. um, drinker. I'm more of a um, more savoury and yeah. dry. Yeah. But, yeah, that's really lovely. No, I, I love that. enjoy that's, that. Uh, that's going to be great. So yep. thanks for having us. It's been a, a great show. Definitely. Um, unbelievable. Everyone knows about Blizzle uh, Wines. We're definitely coming back. Oh, Please we do. have to. Yep. And we'll try all your reds, all your whites, mm. and yep. uh, sparking reds and everything else. I think else. we might need a driver for that day. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no. Jane, she won't be the driver, that's for no, sure. definitely She'll drink not. it all. So, she uh, will. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'll only say cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers Thank you.